I've given this one student two lessons, and since then, he's increased his driver club head speed by 30 miles an hour. Check it out. I'll do it at this time. Okay, no, for sure. What, for sure. What's the, so, everything's going on. So basically what we're saying here is in terms of the actual club head speed that we were able to generate before starting off with elevation was 67 miles an hour, right? Yeah. Then we added yeah. some pressure shift, and then we added some elevation. I guess the and elevation itself is went to 80 miles per hour, I think, from, from 70 to 80. Yeah, from, from, from 67 to 80 yeah. with elevation. 80 80. Yeah. And, and this was with the elevation and the pressure shift. That was 97. So you picked up 30 miles an hour based upon <laughs> adding elevation as well as a pressure shift, which is absolutely, which is huge. Are you kidding? I, I think with those, I mean, you can, I mean, everyone will come after you. If you can increase any of those with those guys that with 30 miles per hour, I mean, I mean, everyone on the, on the golf planet will come after you. But I mean, 30 miles an hour from two pieces. Yeah. Is, is I nuts. Mean. And, and so, <laughs> you know, I, I, I want you to kind of have an opportunity to enjoy that. So I want you to go ahead and play golf already. But yeah, <laughs> more importantly, what we're saying here is there are, there's several power moves we have in the golf swing. So we're going to add a little bit of closure of the stuff that we talk about. And I do want to spend a little time recapping a little bit more because there are certain things that we're going to fixate on, certain things that we're not going to be bothered by. You know, Got where it. are we best pushing our attention? And so we talk about rotation. We talk about scapular glide. We talk about um, trail arm flexion. We talk about elevation and pressure shift. So the two things that we incorporated with you are two of the biggest, more powerful sources of energy transfer in the golf swing being a pressure shift and elevation. So let's recap for a second why they're so critical. And we're gonna do a couple more drills by which we're gonna be stacking some of these skill sets on top of each other, which is absolutely huge. I'm you know, tickled pink the fact that you have the numbers to show for it as well. I mean, <laughs> I essentially, essentially what somebody would say is you pick up about three, three yards for every mile per hour. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're saying here <laughs> I mean so people are if, talking like 90 yards <laughs> if, if we said that do two things we increase your club head speed with a driver so just want to make sure that both those things were the driver um, by a, almost 100 yards I mean nobody's going to believe you no, no one's going to believe me uh, but the thing is, I, I, don't, I don't want them to I want you to go ahead and play them I want you to take their money first um, so, so when it comes to the transfer of energy piece, you know, what we, what we saw initially was this, in terms of understanding the lower body, there's a very clear distinction between rotating and shifting or pressure shifting. And so it's not to say that the lower body doesn't rotate in the backswing. It's not an, an object or an origin of motion. That's the critical piece to ascertain which is I'm not sitting here trying to get my lower body to spin. If I do a good job rotating from the scapula, this will get pulled a little bit. And based on the flexibility, we need to pull this enough so that my chest faces you. And so that's the personal preference based on your own flexibility piece. Secondly, what we worked on quite a bit was what we saw is you would rotate and kind of come off that line, you know, that mm -hmm. pelvis line as opposed to as we're rotating, let me bring this down a little bit more, loading into that right glute. Mm -hmm. And so this is yeah. also gonna move the pelvis in a better position to be able to rotate to begin with. But what we were working on in tandem, which is difficult for most, which is getting the pressure shift with the turn and then the elevation. And so, you know, your swing has gone from being, you know, here and yeah. there. Yeah. to uh -huh. now we are pressure shifting uh -huh. and, and elevating. You, and so, you record this, you record this, right, coach? Yeah, you, I'm recording you, this for okay. you. Okay, good, good. Because I mean, when, when you send, I see, I, I, I mean, so I guess it might be outside because when it's glare, I cannot see well, well, yeah. so I can, when I look at over and over, I start to, you know, understand what you, what you say. It's just like, wow, unbelievable. No, for sure. And, and that's what keeps it fun, which is being able to kind of go back and say, in case of emergency, let's start off with the first Zoom lesson we had and rewatch yeah. from there. 
There you go. <laughs> and, and, and so when it comes to, you know, what you're talking about, you know, a little bit before, which is, you know, concerned over, you know, is my head coming up when making a practice swing? And that's where I would say, is it something to be concerned about when you're, make, are you're making an actual swing? Sure. However, because you're focusing on getting here and visually this is super important because you need to see the elevation in order to create what's called a brain map. So mm -hmm. if I get here, if I rotate and I just elevate, I have no spatial sense of what's going on, which is why it's important to either get here and watch it come up or do it in front of a mirror. Got it. Because we, we want to go ahead and, you know, wire the senses together. In other words, you know, if we're putting together a visual sensation with a kid, you know, with, with your kinematic sequence along with a feel, all of a sudden we're creating a much better map or image in our brain. And so I would be concerned if you got here and we're trying to do the drills without watching it, because you're actually going to increase the learning process or decrease the learning time more by watching that club elevate. The same way as you turn, you want to see where the club is moving in space and time. And so I would consider yeah. that be a good thing. And so if you said, hey, coach, I'm, I just increased my club at speed by 30 miles an hour, to quote you, but I'm concerned that my head is coming up when I'm making a, you know, when I'm making a practice swing, if, if, <laughs> if, 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 if that makes sense. And so I'm, le I'm, I'm less concerned about that. Um, okay, okay. The, the, the one thing that um, you know, I will say is let's have you make a couple swings indoors. Let, let's take a look okay. at what we're seeing. You mean the, with the driver still? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Just we mean crafting that with the driver a lot. Can you see it? Yep. Oh, it's a... Yeah, I can see it just fine. I think I can move this a little. Uh, actually, oh. can you, can you, yeah, there you go. If you can turn it a little bit more to the left. Perfect. Awesome. This is when the think down, vomit first and then pause. But I, I mean, it, it goes so quick, I probably wouldn't, I cannot, you know, I probably won't be able to tell. Good. So, so let, let's talk about the downswing just a little bit, if we may, which is, okay. I, know, I know that, you know, we've been focusing more on the pressure shift as well as on the elevation, but let's recap when it comes to you saying the downswing happens so fast, you know, I can't change anything anyhow. And so if you're swinging the club at 97 miles an hour, so the goal for you is in two sessions, we're going to get you over a hundred. That way we can legitimately say you picked up a hundred yards off the tee. <laughs> okay. That's, that's the goal. Um, secondly, it is possible to make a downswing change. The easiest path to get there, of course, is by making a posture change and then a backswing change first. And so just to recap, because now I feel very comfortable adding in the downswing piece a little bit more that we're creating a better pressure shift and elevation, which is simply put, I want you to go to the top. We're going to do this together. And this is going to be your homework for the week where we're going to Pressure shift with the rotation, and then elevate the arms. Good. Now from here, we're going to slowly squat down into that left, beautiful. So more down. So what's happening here, I'm going to grab a quick image of this. And what you'll see a little bit later is, actually something that's a little bit more telling. Um, so come on, take a look. Come over, take a look. Here you are. Because if if I can squat, more likely I'm um my hand will be tough and inside. That's that's the, the key. Okay, so here, 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 here. If I if so, I want you to take a look here real quick. Um, so as you squat, the goal is to get into a more neutral position where that left hip, knee, and ankle are in alignment. So okay. here, what we see is here's the hip. Okay, here's mm -hmm. the knee, and the ankle would be somewhere right here, right? Got it. It's not yeah. quite in alignment. So again, when we squat, it's not the knee buckling out. It's not me getting here. 
and first move back is saying, hey, let me get my knee to go out. It's down. It's not this. So part of that, the stance width might be a touch wide. Secondly, it might be the fact that the ankles are not rolled in a little bit. Because again, if, if, my, if my knees are buckling out, all of a sudden, the downswing piece becomes a little bit slower because if I have flex in my left knee, what can my hips not do? They can't clear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna narrow up the stance a little bit more, roll the ankles in, bring it to the top, pressure shift, and then that left knee has to go back. If that left knee goes back, the lower body has to clear. And right there, we're probably gonna pick up 10 miles an hour. So we're gonna do this face on. That's it. So even from there, narrow up the stance a little bit more. And if you can tilt the camera down just a hair as well. Good. So roll the ankles in just a little bit more. There you go. That's much better. There you go. That's it. That's it. Good. Yeah, I can, I can practice that over time. It will just become automatic. Yes. So, so I want you to do that again. I want to show you something. Good. Shift into that left side. There you go. Good. Now from there, straighten that. That's it. Almost snap. Almost snap the knee. Yeah, and, and we're going to talk about that in a second because it's not snapping the knee. It's just allowing okay. it to straighten. And so okay. I want you to come on over. I guess if I use my right hand to push it, then that thing, that, le that uh, right, that left will straight itself. Here. So what we see here is much more hip over the knee, over the ankle. Oh, okay. And so, and that's where I certainly want to stop you because there's a difference between snapping and then the knee and allowing it to straighten, which Got is the, the left knee has to straighten for the hips to clear. I feel like if I push it more, I could push it down from the right, I feel like the left will straighten itself. So uh, when I, mean, I push it, I push it down. Yeah, you, I mean, both, both sides of the body are working in tandem. Um, oh, okay. you know, I, I prefer a little bit more of a pulling action, even though you're absolutely correct, they both work together. Okay. But that I, left I, knee I, does not I, Go on. I feel like, um, well, sometimes I feel like when I'm down, I feel like I lift up my ankle quicker than I, I should. Okay. Um, on, the, on the right ankle. So this way, I might, I might have to slow it down. I mean, to leave it there for a little longer. So for as long as you are sliding the, knee, the left knee forward, that certainly would be a sensation. Um, okay. Secondly, just to go to your point, uh, there's a very big difference between allowing that left knee to straighten and snapping it. Let's talk about that because let's say I have, for a little bit of a crude example, um, let's see what I have here. Um, all right, this will be perfect. So I have a, a charger cord, right? If I'm spinning this charger cord around in a circle, the, the, the part of the cord that's moving the fastest is the end, right? So if this goes from here to here in one second, mm -hmm. this tip is going from here to here in one second. So let's say this is moving, I don't know, a foot, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. If I were to put a little piece of tape right here, here, I'll do this actually right now. So here's one piece of tape and here's another, okay? So in one second, we see that, right? So they're both moving in terms of the actual angles, they both have moved 90 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. in one second okay which one is moving faster the the one by uh, your hand 100 percent, because it's moving 
a greater distance in the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if my club head is moving at 97 miles an hour, okay, that means that your hands are moving how fast? It's typically about a fifth of that. Okay. T typically. Okay. Um, and so, you know, closer to 20 miles an hour, depending on length of the arms and who, what player we're talking about. Either way, substantially slower, right? And okay. so, mm -hmm. which means that if the hands are moving slower, how fast is the torso itself moving? Even slower. Even slower, which means that the origin of my planting my left heel, my left knee is actually moving really slow. There's no rush for this to happen, but it has to happen. So I want yeah. you in the downswing as you make it, it's not about getting here and trying to get that knee, you know, moving as fast as you possibly can. It actually should feel like slow motion where I'm getting here, I'm planting, and then this is gradually straightening. That's going to okay. create all the speed that you need. In okay. fact, you know, it's going to help the sequence by you doing it a little bit slower. So I want you to go ahead and make a couple of swings where the goal is not to do it fast. The goal is to do it first. So we're going to bring it to the top. Good. Slow motion. We're going to plant back into the left side. Good. And now just let that knee straighten. And everything's going to go with it. Beautiful. So we're going to have you make some swings. Good. That's it. The goal here is sequencing. Plant, straighten. That's it. Okay. Yeah. But like I said, I, if I practice it long enough, it would, you know, it would, I, would, I don't feel like I have to rush it. A hundred percent. Rush it down. And, and you shouldn't have to rush it. But there you are at the elevation. Beautiful. Plant, straighten. That's it. Great job of the elevation. So much different to the top, by the way. Oh, thanks. Plant, straighten, that's it. So I have to jump on another one in a second, but um, okay. I'll get this rendered over to you. I mean, today is a little bit more of a recap style day and then adding in the downswing piece. So I don't want you to ignore the pressure shift drills and the elevation. I'm tickled pink, however, that you picked up 30 miles an hour. I, I was real happy with that too. <laughs> Way happy. And uh, what, what, when, when we come to, uh, uh, before I let you go, when it comes to a uh, yeah. uh, partial wedge, uh, do, I, do I feel like on the back, do I, I feel like have to, you know, like even though even partial, do I still have to let the, the ship tone? Uh, there will be a little bit of it, yes. Oh, okay. Okay, because yeah. I feel like if I let that turn first and then, and then flex it, it, you know, and then still. The, the, there will be some okay. allowance of lower body rotation. Again, that has to do with your flexibility. But again, what okay. separates a partial wedge is not really having that dynamic pressure shift. It's just oh, the rotation okay. and okay. a little bit of elevation trail arm flexion. Got it. Yeah, that, that's one thing I was going because I mean, I, I, I don't, I mean, because I don't want to turn it into a three-fourth of a swing. Because that, 100%. That's, so three fourths of the swing is more part. I mean, use the pressure shift. For sure, big difference. Okay. okay. Yeah, because again, if you think about it, pressure shift itself adds about twenty percent more club head speed. Therefore, yeah. if you want something that has less, you're just going to take away the pressure shift. Because essentially, what you were doing in your defense is the full swings you were making when you were elevating were partial wedges. You were hitting everything like a partial wedge. Now that we added the pressure shift to the mix, that would be a full swing. Okay, got it. Okay, because I mean, I mean, because by doing the the uh, the uh, the shift on uh, the pressure shift, I could just like enjoy my three fourth of a swing because I could. I mean, I, the ball. I feel yes. like I don't have to swing real hard because the ball seems like more in play for me. Big time. But when time. I go for a full swing, I you know then the ball starts to spray. A hundred percent, and that's the thing is. I think we're also gonna get a little bit more accurate in terms of the spring, just by getting that left knee out of the way as well. Okay. So that's gonna allow everything yeah, else we'll, to clear. We'll, we'll so practice on that. But yeah, yeah, if you can send a video on it so I can have, I, I wanna see that, that knee thing so I can- we'll Reinforce it? On. Yeah, reinforce I, it. I, I will get it rendered up right now for you. Okay, thanks. And thanks. we'll, and we'll okay. make that happen for sure. No, my All pleasure. Right. So again, um, I want you to continue doing the pressure shift and the elevation drills. Okay. Now we're going to stack on the next piece, which is going to be the rotation of the hip. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, not that they, but their hip is going to rotate as a function of the plant and the left knee straightening. Mm-hmm. That's, and it. The left knee. That's it. Now, so now the, left knee, the left knee straight and then a, a, a simultaneously with the right head straight. That, that will be the next piece. I want to see the left knee okay. straightened first. Okay. Sounds awesome. good. Thanks, Coach. Great. Thanks, Paul. My Paul. pleasure. Appreciate Great work. That. Of course. Take my care. pleasure. You too. Thank you. Talk to you Thank soon. You. Bye-bye. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed watching that private Zoom lesson as a critical part of the learning process is actually found in watching other students going through the exact same breakthroughs in their game that you're looking to accomplish. And if you want to schedule a one-on-one private Zoom coaching session with me, go and click the link or the button in the description below and you'll be taken to my personal calendar where you will easily schedule a one-on-one coaching session with me where we will literally spend an hour polishing every element of your golf swing. And again, I really do appreciate your interest in who I am and what I do, and cannot wait to be the guy that all your golfing buddies absolutely hate this season. So if you want to schedule your one-on-one coaching session with me, go and click the button below.